<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not many guys say, yeah, go ahead, shoot some more. Oh yeah, that danced. It sure did. Hey there folks, Spencer Ripple the Moose Whisperer here. I love hunting stories that come from hunting guides. I mean, think about it, the success that they have in one year is sometimes more than the rest of us will achieve in our entire lives. Getting multiple moose a season, dragging them out one after the other, exciting times, great stories, and I love to hear those stories from my good friend and hunting partner, Nathan Adrian. Folks, you've heard from him before and you'll hear from him again. So let's get right to it without further ado. <laughs> let's get right into Action. it. <laughs> All right. So uh, this is this is another uh, story from when I was uh, a professional guide, and uh, this was my favorite hunt. I had the the great pleasure of guiding four hunters from Oregon, and what a fabulous group of guys they were. Two of them were uh, Vietnam vets, uh -huh. and uh, we had some some uh, me and the one fellow had some pretty good talks about what he went through over there, and uh, you, you know. We really owe a lot to our to our veterans. Uh, it, it's incredible what they do and what they've gone through. And, uh, you know, most of the time they didn't sign up for that type of stuff. So, um, anyway, they were fabulous fellas. It was a group of four, and uh, right from the start, things weren't going well for them. Okay, it was two brothers and the two Vietnam vets, which were quite a bit older. The group started out as the two brothers, Kelly and Travis. I won't I won't use their last names, but. Uh, <laughs> I don't have permission. <laughs> and then uh, the other two guys, Tom and Larry. And uh, to give you some background, Larry had hunted moose with us, not with me as a guide, but with, had hunted moose with us three or four times and had taken some dandy moose. The brothers, Kelly and, and Travis, um, this was their first moose hunt. Travis, he was the youngest, and, and he was, if he got a nice moose, he was going to have a full head mount done. We, we had time to do a short evening hunt which we did, but we only had minutes before dark and, you know, we didn't see anything. And the other guys didn't see everything. I had, I had Kelly and I had Tom and, uh, my, uh, guiding partner had, uh, Larry and Travis, and we were kind of just across the river from each other. They were in big metal. We were in fire meth. We'd cut a trail into the, into the camp and they'll call it a, a fire meth. So, mm -hmm. so uh, we go, Oh, I'm going to back up a little bit here. It was just the three of them were looking for a fourth and they found Tom. And that's how he got permission, you know, got in on this hunt. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, on the way up, they get to the border. And of course, when you're at the border, you get asked questions. And one of the questions they asked is, have you ever had, have you ever been arrested? And Travis had to say, yes. What for? I got in a fight. It was an assault charge. Sorry, sir. You can't enter the country. So all this dreaming paid for his hunt. You know, I mean, he'd get some some uh, reimbursement, but he's turned around. He's heading home. He can't come on the hunt, and he, and he was he was pretty devastated. Right, yeah. So what they did is they were traveling in two vehicles, and and they uh, they split they split up. They put all the gear for the three guys in the one truck, and Travis grabbed his gear and turned around and headed home. Phoned his wife. Well, his wife gets on the phone. He's, he's pretty, pretty upset. Um, they hang up and she immediately calls Canada Customs, starts talking to him. They figured out a way to get him into the country. So now she's phoning the other truck and says, Travis is coming. You boys wait. She gets a hold of Travis and says, uh, you got to go to the Canada Customs. When you get to the crossing, you're going to ask for this officer. I've been talking with him. He's got everything figured out. So he goes back and talks to the guy, and what they did is they made him an honorary Canadian citizen. You cannot be denied entrance into your own country. Uh -huh. He was an honorary Canadian, so he got to come hunting. <laughs> so the other boys waited, and they all they all arrived for the hunt. So that was that was That's the first difficulty they had. Yeah. It was pretty neat, pretty <laughs> neat. First night, we we go out for a few minutes, nothing happening. We climb into the sleeping bags, and next morning we get up, and and uh, it was a beautiful spot. We were only you know hunting 50 feet from the tent. So we took a couple of chairs over there and sat down real comfortable on the edge of the field. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we got a long view about, about a thousand meters down the field, maybe more. I said to them boys, I said, first off, I said, you boys got to decide who's shooting first. Mm -hmm. And, and Tom said, he said, I was the last guy in on the hunt. He said to Kelly, he says, you shoot. 
Okay, that's decided. I looked at Kelly. I says, uh, how big moose do you want? Oh, he said, moose really start looking nice when they get up 40 inches or better. He said, I I'd like a 40 inch moose. I said, oh, I said, that's reasonable. I said, I think we can get you a 40 incher. Mm -hmm. So I started calling and I called, you know, 10 minutes. And here I see a cow walking up the far side of the field and 20 steps behind her is a brute of a bull. He's good looking. And he's walking, and you know how they walk, eh? And he's walking behind that cow like that, grunting every step. And uh, we, we can see him pretty good, but he won't come to the call. He's following that cow. He ain't leaving her at all. So she's getting close to being ready to breed. And the cow's not coming towards us, so the closest they're going to get is about 200 meters. They're getting into that, close into that 200 meter range. I'm talking to the hunters, telling them, you know, hold on guys, nothing to be excited about. We're going to get a good shot at this moose. I asked, as, as the moose got to about the 200 mark, they stopped and looked at us. And I, when, when he turned and looked straight at us, incredible. What a look, hey? And I said to Kelly, I said, uh, hey, I said, uh, is that one big enough for you? And he turned and he gave me a look, man. He, he figured it was the understatement of the year whether or not that <laughs> bull was big enough. What a beautiful bull. If he had a downside, it was that he only had two points on each side on the brow palm. Oh, yeah. I gave him the go-ahead to shoot, and he, he was shooting a borrowed rifle. He'd borrowed a 300 Ultra Mag. You don't need nothing that big, but he had one, and he <laughs> shot it well, and uh, Moose went down. All right. Yeah, straight down, uh, didn't, didn't move. Cal trotted off after a minute or two, and we walked over there started taking pictures and uh oh well, i said boys it's time to time to start uh getting this moose chunked up so we start skinning and what do you know the other guys had heard us shoot and they come across well they come walking up and they look down at that moose laying there and they said we turned one down bigger than that this morning <laughs> and i look at the other guide like you turned down a bigger moose than this this morning? And he just kind of gave a kind of a little shrug. Okay, well, whatever. So why'd you turn it down? He said, well, he said he only had one on the brow on one side. And uh, Travis was a shooter. And he wanted two on the brow. Mm -hmm. At least. He, he For three or four, but, but two at least. Yeah. Okay, well, there you go. So we chunked up that moose and uh, backpacked it to the boat. You know, it was an easy job with, you know, with uh, with six guys packing. Right on. You, you know, <laughs> you went quick. And they nicknamed that bull. He was Kong. Nice. So we go back up to camp and relax the afternoon, get the kinks out of our backs and packing that brood of a moose. <laughs> and evening hunt comes on. Hey there, Nathan. Thanks so much. That is a great story, but I'm going to pause you right there because, folks, you got to stay tuned the next week to hear part two about the other client, how he shot a moose the next morning, a great story about buck fever and a lesson on how to judge antler size from a distance. Yeah, you're going to love it, folks. Thanks for watching. You know if you stuck with it this far. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and share. We're trying to start a community here, folks. Thanks for watching. More stories to come.